All right, awesome. Well, thank you guys for joining and happy Tuesday. And I know a lot of you guys have been looking forward to this call because we are so excited to have Delray Messer on with us tonight. Um, Delray, thank you again so much. Um, a lot of people on our team and on these calls are actually pretty brand new. So they're really excited to hear your story for the first time. And then a lot of the members who have heard you speak before, heard your recent corporate webinars, were just really, really excited to hear that you're going to be a guest for us tonight. So I am not going to have you do most of your um, introduction and story, but I did see you have, I know you had two girls. I didn't realize their ages. So McKenna's 16 now, huh? Mm -hmm. Wow. Sweet 16, having a teenager. My two already act like they're 16, so I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> and then Gianna is six, so so cute. And I love, we love following you on your social media. And um, we just, first of all, would love to just, hear your story again, just how things were before isogenics and how you started. And if you could kind of walk us through that. And then I think because you are in such momentum, your team is in so, so much momentum, we're really feeling that too with a lot of our team members. Um, I know everybody's feeling the momentum and, you know, sometimes some people are getting frustrated or stuck, but I wanted you to just kind of maybe share a little bit of what you're doing and what you find works and what kind of mindset people should have. Um, and we do have an array. We have some people who are brand spanking new mm -hmm. and then some people who have been with us within just this year and then a few veterans. So I'd love to just turn it over to you and hear your story. Awesome. Well, I really want to cater to all of you on the Zoom as well. So if something comes up for you, definitely put it in the chat. I would love to address it and just share, you know, my experience and what's worked. I know Gina popped on our morning Zoom a couple of weeks ago. And it's mind blowing like what she shared. If you're not following what she is saying, please do because retention is so important with this business. And she blew me away with just a couple of tips that I think we were really missing as a team for retention, whether it's the third week Zoom and just her three R's. Um, we've been following it to a T and it's absolutely been working. So thank you so much, number one, for sharing those tips because they were exceptional. I love just learning how different leaders do things. And you know what's powerful about what you all have with this kind of training is you will never build a business without a happy product user. And so that is really truly the key is making sure people have an exceptional customer experience. You're getting some of the best training. I'm so grateful for what you shared with us. Um, so I was approached uh, for about, I said no to Isogenics for seven years and not even like a nice no. I'm talking not even, I would not even give anybody the time of day when it came to multi-level marketing or network marketing. And it's probably because I had a lot of pride. I was a doctor. I paid a lot of money for a doctorate. So I thought I knew everything. I was kind of had my ego in the way. I wanted to brand myself and I had a practice for five years. Um, but I just, I knew something was missing. I, my vision outgrew the walls of the office. I was in an environment that was not allowing me to thrive as a person. And at the end of the day, I was seeing my older daughter like an hour at night because all adjusting hours were early mornings, late nights, and it was marketing on the weekend. I'm talking like sitting at a mall kiosk eight hours a day for Saturday and Sunday, asking people to get their spine checked. Um, so it was a challenging business model for me. I knew very quickly that I loved why I did it, which was always health and wellness, nutrition. I had a weight loss and detox program in the office. I loved learning marketing and messaging, and I absolutely loved people and making an impact in their lives. And ironically, I was doing things like healthy happy hours that we all hear about in sipping socials, you know, and isogenics in my office. But you know, I had $200,000 in student loan debt, very little time, um, was learning a lot through the marketing process. I will tell you, you learn quickly how to go for no and rejection by sitting at a mall kiosk. And if you need help with that, I would highly recommend doing that because this business in marketing is literally so easy and simple compared to, to that kind of marketing. Um, but it taught me a lot. And so I quickly realized that that wasn't what I wanted to do forever. So my bright idea was, well, why don't I take the program that I had in my office and bring it online? Because then I could design my days around on my daughter. Um, the only part of the business that was really high overhead um, for the online model was going to be the supplements I was using. So I thought, well, rather than private label, you know, and use another company's, I'm going to make my own. <laughs> Bright idea. Um, but I quickly unveiled the curtain of Oz in that industry and was so disheartened and let down and frustrated by the lack of integrity. 
and the label lying that was happening. I mean, I saw things being put in products that shouldn't be in dog food, let alone in your kids' vitamins. So when I started to understand this process that was happening and started to high pressure, you know, my manufacturer for third party validation of testing and raw materials and ingredients, and they couldn't provide it in the way that was to the standard of my liking, I was in a pretty tough position because I put a lot of time, money, energy, and effort into going online and quickly realized I had just failed forward again and took a big risk. Um, but what I gained through that experience was a lot of knowledge in why I chose Isogenics for the quality and purity of the product line, the third party testing, the no compromise ingredients, like some of the things that were an absolute must for a standard for me of integrity in the product and purity in the product really resonated with me. But it took the right person at the right time in a big transition period in my life to be even open to a conversation. So it actually felt a lot like maybe a lot of people's lives feel today. I was in a place of a lot of uncertainty. I was under a lot of financial stress. I was in a personal transition in my relationship. So now a single mom with two daughters and like, wow, what was I going to do next? Um, and I didn't necessarily have a plan. I, I um, thought, well, maybe I go back to chiropractic. Maybe I can figure something out online again. Um, so somebody introduced me to a woman that maybe all of you are avoiding having conversations with people that you think have it all together or a highly credentialed professional because you think, well, they have an office, they have a family, they look successful. Um, you know, that was what it, my life looked like. But unfortunately, I was the one, you know, crying in desperation quietly to myself, like wondering what else is there to this life? So when this woman had a conversation with me, I was introduced to her by a friend. She was the first person that actually gave me the space to discover if this was a fit for me or not. And that's literally your first clue is giving people the space of discovery is so important. Like not necessarily convincing someone that this is for them, because if you're somebody that's frustrated right now, or you are attached to outcomes or you have expectations um, when you go into conversations, that is where I believe your fastest way to be super unhappy and unfulfilled in this journey, because so many more people are not ready for this right now, but will be at a certain time in their life. And you will be top of mind when you choose to serve people in their timing versus your own. So if you have that feeling of frustration, it's likely because you're attached to an outcome so my biggest piece of advice is divorce the outcome and marry the progress or the process of your journey and who you become. And I think my biggest you know, takeaway as an entrepreneur is I've always been very okay with uncertainty. I grew up on a farm, so like everything's uncertain <laughs> in a farming life. Like our day to day was uncertain because I didn't know when my dad was like going to go out or come back in, you know, from the field. I didn't know, we didn't know what the crop was going to be like that, you know, year to year. Um, we didn't have a lot of family vacations because cows don't milk themselves. So we just grew up in this uncertain world and I got very used to that. And I think for myself, I was going to figure out a way to work for myself or literally die trying. Like I would have rather slept in my car than like check in with a boss, but that's just who I am. So even if you're somebody that has a job you love, if you um, really need to be told what to do and you're in an employee mindset, it may take a little bit for you to shift into a CEO ownership position in your business. And that's okay. Like that, you can, you can have an incredible job that you love and do this as a side gig, do this as a side hustle. But unfortunately, you know, or fortunately, you're going to have to have some growing pains in learning how to literally run your own business. Because if you're waiting on a leader to tell you what to do, if you are literally waiting to do anything, you're going to have to be your own biggest cheerleader as an entrepreneur. Um, so if you're somebody that wants to get your products paid for and earn $500 a month, I truly feel like you can do that pretty simply in isogenics by being kind of told what to do. But when you want more, when you crave more, you're going to have to become more in order to make that happen. Because there were a lot of dark, lonely nights when no one was patting my back. And, you know, a lot of people left isogenics that were supposed to be my, you know, team leaders that 
were supposed to be patting my back the past year and just weren't. But I don't operate that way. I operate on my own personal inspiration every single day. And that's what truly, I believe, breeds a team of emerging leaders and leaders that are self-inspired and self-motivated. And if you want that type of person on your team, you're going to have to become that type of person, you know, that, that manages your time, that chooses priorities right now, that, you know, that, that is self-inspired to, to do the work when you don't feel like it, you know, and that's the difference between an employee mindset and a CEO, you know, and if you want to be a CEO of your life, you have to be a CEO of your business. And that's, you know, fortunately what we have here with Isogenics is a major growth opportunity in who you become because you have to master a lot of your, I would say, excuses or self-limiting beliefs. And I had to do that, you know, by myself in those, those lonely, lonely nights um, with my girls. When I first started, nobody was telling me what to do. Nobody was encouraging me or necessarily like supporting the day to day. So, um, I think once you raise your standard of necessity, then your action will follow. And for me, it was necessary for me to, to grow, um, myself and my business followed that because I, I had a lot of, of self-limiting beliefs at that time emotionally. And I think we all do. And whether you're somebody right now that's saying, you know, maybe you are in momentum, like a lot of us are, and you're riding on that feeling that everybody is experiencing right now, whether it's, you know, wins and rank advancements, wins and new enrollments, but that, you know, it doesn't last forever. Nothing does. And, you know, experiencing this business, my business went like this, you know, hitting Isogenics Millionaire in three years, that didn't happen in three years. It happened in 13. You just didn't see the 10 of me at a mall kiosk. <laughs> so like, don't compare yourself to people that you think go fast in this business because likely they came in with a massive amount of skills, a super resilient mindset. And that's what I came here with. It's just this vehicle oper operated, allowed me to operate with more efficiency, if that makes sense. And I think comparison is one of the fastest ways for you to paralyze your action and just, you know, try and, it, I, I really feel that way, especially in this business model where it's really easy to see other leaders going faster, even people on your own team or, oh my gosh, people are rank advancing. I'm not like, there's gotta be something wrong with me. Maybe this isn't for me when it just takes, it takes a lot of time to build skills in entrepreneurship. You know, you don't build them overnight. And I feel like if you want to, you know, Zach Slobin said this the other day on ISA Academy, if you want microwave leadership, that's going to be people that come in and dip out really fast. And if you put the crock pot on, it's going to take five years. It's going to take seven years. It's going to take a, a while for you to build those skills. Be patient in your own lane, but also urgent in your action. And I think those two combinations are key. You can be urgent in your action, but patient in your results. It's almost like farming, right? You got to plant a lot of seeds. It doesn't matter how much water you throw on them. You want them faster. That's not how life or business works. You have to have the patience to reap the harvest. I will tell you last year is the reason why my business is at where it's at the past four weeks. This was not something that happened in four weeks. The momentum we're in is because I did not quit and I showed up when literally half my team didn't for an entire year. And you know, the self doubt and the seeds of doubt and the drama and the gossip that weaves itself into not only the whole entire company, but in teams is literally the most wasted time that I've ever seen leaders engage in. Because at the end of the day, every business has seasons. It will be, it will go like this, it will plateau, it will go down, it will go up, it will, and that is exactly what happened with mine. And, you know, it's, it's not a surprise that right now we have a huge growth opportunity because there are so many problems to solve. Any business that's in growth is solving problems and adding value to people's lives. So we get our nutrition shipped to our doorstep. That is like step number one of incredible value with no membership fees anymore. The ability for a family to be able to eat for free with Isogenics, the type of value that's there to bridge an income gap. And I believe actually the most important product we have is not even tangible. You don't get it shipped to your doorstep. You get it here, which is cultivating community and support and encouragement and loving on people. I love, love on people every day, whether a customer to a consultant, to a business builder, I want to know them. I want a relationship with them. 
And, you know, if they're in action, they get mine. You know, that's how I operate. And I don't listen to what people say. I watch what they do. Um, their behavior will show me a lot. And words are fleeting. Excitement is fleeting. I know you may be excited about momentum right now, but once again, that will go away. But what is never fleeting is truly consistency. Regardless of what you see the outcome is in your business, consistency always wins always long-term and it's not consistency for like two weeks <laughs> it's like years which can be a painful process if you think about where your limiting belief systems are they're usually going to show up in the self-sabotaging behaviors that hold you back from your best efforts from your best necessity in moving forward and i just raised my necessity i was not going to let any excuse at the time, you know, five years ago when I first started getting in the way of building something for my daughters specifically, I mean, they raised the level of necessity in my life that I've never experienced before. If I had self-doubt, I would throw podcasts in my ears. You know, if I started to listen to the voices that I'd heard for years of, you won't be anything, you know, you won't ever be able to provide for your daughters, like all of these stories, I just chose to create a new one. Even if it was you know, one of those things where I always tell my girls, like affirmations are great, but if they're not backed up by action, they don't mean much, you know? And so I would drown my fears in massive action, yet be super patient. I mean, several of my executives enrolled after, I'm telling you, two of them were two and a half years plus of connecting. I mean, are you willing and patient enough to truly add value to people's lives for years before they start isogenics? That's truly the question. If you're in it for the infinite game, then the answer is always yes. If you're in it for Fiji, probably no. Uh, meaning there's always going to be a contest and promotion. There's always going to be a trip incentive. They're exciting to me, but not like, oh my gosh, I have to get into massive action because now there's a trip attached. It's like, well, no, that's what I do all the time, you know? So I think that's another thing too, is when you feel a sense of like frustration because you're not getting your five enrollments for the extra $200, maybe all of you are like close or you're, why aren't people starting, you know? And, or I'm talking to so many people. Here's the problem with that is if you're not creating a pipeline of people that are, are warm, you know, leads, we're moving people from a cold lead to a warm to a hot, meaning they're ready to enroll. And you're trying to enroll through promotions to cold leads because you haven't reached out to people consistently for a while. That's when you get frustrated because your efforts of consistency breed literally all of these connections. And there's going to be people that fall into the pipeline of getting started when you do that. So I see leaders and, and people do that a lot where they're like hot and cold I have one in particular, like we talk, so he would not care that I'm saying this, but I'm like, oh, he's back. Like, he'll add like 30 people to the transform your our, our product page. He'll introduce me to like 10 people in three-way messages and then like literally fall off the face, face of the planet. Total ghost. No idea where he went. And that's really hard for people to trust because where did you go? Do you not care to follow up with these people? One of the ladies reached out to me that he added and she's like, do you mentor people? Cause I'm in your group and I just don't really have anybody following up with me. And you know, that is your first clue when you are so all in and all out. And it's like, it's so much more exhausting to try and do that rather than just be consistent every single day. This is all like so good, right guys? Not if you are like feeling this. Um, I think we've all experienced either people we've either tried to work with or, you know, maybe some people can relate for themselves and they're trying to decide how consistent they want to be. So it's so, so good. Um, do you have time for a couple questions? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So first one somebody put in here, I think it was Brooke, was about what exactly was said to you that was that was beating you where you are with your timing and, and it just made sense to you? Like what was the conversation like, or was it that there was trust built? Like what was it that was that deciding factor? Yeah, this is a complete stranger. So it wasn't necessarily like trust right away. You know what she did a really good job of is asking me questions of what was most important to me, like my priorities, because previously 
people would dangle the income carrot because I mean, I literally had a detox system. It was like Isopro. It's literally called Dr. Del Rey's detox and weight loss kit. Like I had an, I, basically Isopro, natural accelerator and um, uh, cleanse, right? Like in a little kit. And so she could have like dissected product comparison, right? Like, well, we have the same thing. And like, this is what you could do instead. And she didn't, like, she didn't try to, and what I'm, why this is so important is because so many times we focus on the what in the conversations, like we sell the product in the business versus selling the why mm -hmm. instead of selling the problem, the pain point and the value. And so she magnified my pain points and it killed me. Like it crushed me because the pain points for me, when she asked me like, what are the things you're spending time on now that are robbing you of joy? Like, what are the things as a business owner, what are the things that are taking up your time? I don't know, like trying to figure out the right size of a label on my products, <laughs> fulfillment, customer service. Like I was everything to, and this is small business owners 101. What they got passionate about is sometimes now what they despise because they're so in the business doing everything and it's robbing them of their family time. It's robbing them of the passion that they found for it previously because they're doing all the back end work. And that's exactly where I was. And so she said, well, if you could eliminate all of that, what would you be doing? What would your ideal day look like? And I literally down to a T described my life today. She said in five years, in five years, what does it look like? And I started to, for the first time in a really long time, dream about possibility. And because I was a single mom, I was in such a stressful place in my life. I had not dreamt about anything. I was in survival mode. And does that sound familiar about where we're at today? Right? People are in survival mode. They are struggling. So the one thing she led with was compassion empathy and an open opportunity to listen to what was important to me and that wasn't what was important to her had she been trying to get like a fiji trip and the fast five and like enroll me that day i took months to enroll months like that is what somebody that's very serious i'm an all in or all out person i am not doing anything in the gray area if i'm going to say yes it is an all in yes i was going to build a legacy for my girls so the fact that she had patience and that open ended like conversation was beautiful and then you know i i now when i go into conversations like that you know really tell people from the get go this is a discovery call this is a discovery call to see if this is a fit for you or not and it has changed everything in my connecting with highly successful people because they don't want to be convinced that something is for them. They want to be the ones to make the decision if it's a fit or not. And especially when they know that you're absolutely serious, that if it's not a fit for them, maybe it's a fit for somebody that they know, that referral, right? But if not, how can I still help you with your business? How can I still help you or serve you in any way and if there is a time in your life that this is a fit, I want to be the first person you call or think of because I gave you the space to decide and didn't turn you off from the network marketing high pressure, right? So I think that is like my takeaway is that space with number one, no judgment, no comparison from one to the next. Think about all the other people and other companies, you know, like we don't need to, to, the bad mouth other companies. We just don't. We can say, great, what did you love about it? What was your experience? Tell me why you chose network marketing in the first place. Do you get the type of mentorship or leadership that allows you to be able to excel as a human and a leader in your team? Everybody says, no, obviously they don't get this type of mentorship. Do you feel the work that you've put in, you know, that your compensation plan allows you to be able to thrive in your business? Are you open to, to taking a look and seeing if this could be a fit for you? Like it's just a different posture and it's one of abundance instead of scare abundance instead instead of scarcity you know that is the difference in the mindset and that's great and clearly you had duplicated those kinds of conversations and building those kinds of relationships with your people that you've brought in because i know it does it takes time it takes a lot of asking questions and um, i know you you're really big on creating and adding value to people yeah so, absolutely yeah relationship yeah. with everybody that i work with like every executive that i have I personally enrolled 12. Our goal is 100 as a team. 
and uh, everyone, I know their, their kids' names, their husbands' names, their deep why, I know the color of the carpet in their home. Like that's another clue that the more, you know, intimate relationships and meaningful relationships you have with people, you know, the more, you know, I believe the more they'll be around for the long run, which is why I didn't freak out with everything happening in the past year. I was like, I put so much energy, time and um, love into my team that even if somebody was going to choose to go, I, I just don't, I can't judge it because it's bless and release. Like I want the best for everybody's family. And if they feel that there's a better fit somewhere else, great. But if you can operate that way too, in your business, in your day to day, you're going to give people so much freedom. They're going to be pulled to you like a magnet. Think of in a personal relationship. Have you ever been told what you should do? It probably doesn't work out really well. <laughs> so I kind of give people like that, that, you know, trust and faith that we have a meaningful relationship and what they choose is their choice. And I think a lot of us get caught up thinking we're not a great leader when people make decisions that we aren't, we don't expect, which is why when you have expectations of people, you're going to be let down, be surprised instead, be surprised. Um, are there people that do not have the entrepreneurial skills that make this work? Okay. I know that's a big word. And a lot of you that may be new are like, eh, I'm not an entrepreneur. I don't even know like what that means. What are the skills, right? Network marketing has like seven basic skills. I had to study network marketing. I've never done it before. When I saw the comp plan, I was like, huh? <laughs> um, what? <laughs> I have no clue what you're talking about. I literally remember just smiling and nodding um, because BV, like what? 600, 300? I had to watch it 14 times before I even knew what personal volume was. But I had a desire to master it because I wanted this so bad for my girls. I watched it every morning. I'd get up at 4.30 and I'd watch it for a half an hour every single morning until I could draw the entire thing out from to, to max out position. And that's another clue too, is like how bad you want something is usually how quickly and the necessity you raise for mastering skills. So an entrepreneur is this. It's somebody that, wants to solve problems and provide value. I believe those are the two definitions of what an entrepreneur is. Now, a lot of people think, well, I'm not a business owner, so I'm not an entrepreneur. I believe anybody that wants to add value to this planet and solve a really big problem, like, I don't know, the healthcare crisis. And right now, the amount of people that don't have work, the amount of mental health challenges that we have, that people actually just need to see, to be seen, valued, and heard, you're an entrepreneur if you're doing that every day. And so the skills can absolutely be learned. The question that I have for, no, 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 where is it? Katie, is do you have the desire and do you have a resilient mindset? And those two things are what I look for in business builders. And I will know very quickly by their language which one they are because a fixed mindset will justify complain and blame anything outside of them say I can't because and I'm like really where did that story come from because it's a story we can create a new one if you want to and desire to and the story is oh yeah I add value I solve problems I can build skills I've built skills before We've all built skills before. I mean, we all didn't know how to ride a bike. <laughs> we all didn't know how to do something at one point in our life, but mastery takes insane amount of repetition and practice. And it's repetition, repetition, repetition. And that's what I would do with anything that I needed to master. I mean, when I did my first chiropractic exam, um, I actually sought out mentorship when I had my daughter. She was three months old in chiropractic school. And I was like, who are the most successful chiropractors in Minneapolis? Like, I'm going to pay them to learn from them because school's not going to teach me business or marketing. It's going to teach me how to adjust a human and that's not going to run my practice. So I went and worked for them and they would make me do like new patient exams and then all the mall kiosk stuff. <laughs> and I remember specifically my first one. He like shoved me in the door because I was like, I can't, I don't want to do it. I don't know what I'm doing. He gave me scripts sound familiar? Like he goes, listen, it's not going to be what you say, but at least you have bullet points to follow. So I learned scripting. I learned confidence and state just like everybody else. Nothing in my life has ever been gifted to me. I was literally like the worst athlete. I was not naturally talented. I got lapped twice in my first 
track race I've ever done. I was kind of like, I ate way too much Schwann's ice cream. So I really had to like continually just build belief in myself. And business was the same thing. I didn't go to business school. So what do you need to do to master skills? You got to be rep- it's repetition. So I walk into my first exam and walk out and he's like, how did it go? I'm like, oh my gosh, this is terrible. I had pit stains. I had this like pink jacket on. They were all the way down to like my pants. And he just laughed. He's like, but you did it. And he's like, this is going to be one of a thousand. You did your first one. And doesn't that sound familiar, right? Like this business allows you to be able to have your first every time. Every day is a new day. It's why I love it because I'm never going to be done learning in this business. So if you're somebody that is attached to growth and learning something new about yourself, like I'm a very curious human. I'm like, hmm, I wonder what I can learn today. I wonder who I can serve today. I wonder who needs me today. I wonder what amazing, surprising things I'm going to find out about myself. And then maybe some that you like, know are creeping up with self-limiting beliefs that you need to master. I always just got curious about those. I was like, I wonder why I have that story. I wonder why I think that I can't dot, dot, dot. And I'm like, hmm, I wonder. I wonder if I can create a new one and back it up with action. Oh yeah, that's right. I can. Any of us can at any time create a new story. I love that. And you know, just to reiterate a couple things, um, I just love how you really hone in on the consistency and that, you know what, if you don't have the skills and you really want this, then you practice and you learn it. And I love that you just kept watching that comp plan until you got it. Um, I do believe, and I I feel like I heard it in what you were saying is it's just, you know, be resourceful. If you want to be a leader in this and you want to take this far, you have to be resourceful so that you have to become the leader you wish to attract in your team. Um, and just the last question, just because I know you have your two girls and <laughs> right now they're home with you, right? Yes. So I was on your call and it's a daily call and it was 8.30 in the morning for me. So I think that's 7.30 in the morning for you. I was very impressed. And you said <laughs> that you are really trying to keep a structure and a routine. And so I was really impressed by that. And I imagine that you have learned how to time block and schedule your time in your day and balance it pretty well because I see how much you do with your girls and how fulfilled it is. So what are some tips with that? Because we do have a lot of um, people on the call right now who are a bit thrown off, you know, with routines and some having kids home, um, others just having crazy amounts of work. Some are still having to go there, you know, they are essential workers and Just life is even a little extra crazy right now. So how are some of those time blocking and structure scheduling type of skills helping you? And what can you, you know, give as far as tips on that? Oh my gosh. Okay. So you all have hope. I'll tell you that (laughs) because if I can master my time, all of you can. I was literally like a hot mess express train with my time. It was like, Choo Choo, Del Rey, McKenna and Gianna are coming through, like make way. I let my days completely run me. I had no idea how to manage my time, run my days. I grew up in a very, I called it organized chaos household. Like once again, farming, like you never know what's going on. So it's organized chaos for kids. And it was a learned behavior. So once again, mastering my time, and it's a skill. You know, mastering your time is a skill. And so when you start anything that's going to be a new skill, it once again takes repetition and it also takes a little bit of grace, meaning you're going to have to forgive yourself a couple times, but the faster you do and get back on track, the better you're going to be at it. So for example, I, you know, when I first started to really learn time blocking, managing my time, I'm the type of person that would do this business 24 seven because I love it that much, but that doesn't work for your family. And it didn't work for my girls. It didn't work for the team. I had to really be very strict in my time. And I will tell you, there are days it gets away from me because I love it so much. Um, Fortunately, my little one is like super gracious and she loves it just as much. I was doing a Zoom earlier and she literally fell asleep while I was just like rocking her. And she loves listening. And you know, when when you do time block, I'm going to send you a video that you can send to the team. I did one specifically on isogenic income producing activities. It's like 
you know, I think 30, 40 minutes long and goes into daily breaking down. Like I get out the highlighters and I show you exactly what I do for prioritizing your time. I think one of the things when I first started is I thought my calendar had to look like another top leaders. Like I, my days had to be like this person because they're successful. And I just realized that we all operate so differently. My significant other, highly successful entrepreneur, and he is a night owl. You know, he doesn't like mornings. He doesn't want to work out in the morning. He doesn't like it. Yes, honey. What, you want to say hi? Say hi, everyone. Hi. Hi. <laughs> this is Gianna. Hi, Gianna. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. We will go around the block. Can we still go for a walk? Yes, we're going to go for a walk. <laughs> So um, he, he, he does things differently. Like he's like, uh, working on the morning sounds absolutely terrible. <laughs> you know? It was cute when we first started dating. I was like, really? And he's like, yeah, no, that's not when I'm most productive. So I want you to also think about when you are most productive and you get your time blocking out. And you got to honestly, like you got to operate like you're already a six or seven figure earner. Because even when I had nothing, my calendar was going to look like a six figure earner when I first started, meaning blocks of 15 minutes. And if somebody missed a call, it's like, okay, you get one chance to reschedule. And you know, that's my number one thing is respecting my time. It is so, it's my number one priority. Um, and if people miss calls, like two done, like I won't do it. You get a link, that's it. And then, you know, one of my builders, she just missed a call like a half an hour ago or 45 minutes ago. And she's like, can you talk now? I'm like, no, you need to reschedule. I had 15 minutes. So that's all there is to it. And so even if I didn't have people to talk to and I had an empty calendar, I'm like, I have somebody I'm going to talk to in 15 minutes. I have 15 minutes. I would say that. I literally spoke it into fruition. I have 15 minutes. And there is so much that you can do in this business in 15 minutes. It is powerful. I time block everything. My workouts, my morning routine, income producing activities. In fact, if I have my calendar, I can show you even today. I'll show you like what, um, hopefully, yep, there we go. So like these were the 15 minutes, you know, it's, it's, here's a training. Here's uh, an interview that I'm doing for a women's event. These are 15 minutes here. My solid core workout, you know, time with G, all of this was blocked in the morning for homeschooling in the morning here. Um, and then it's just, all of this is literally done and I won't waver from it. And when I do, here's what you're going to start to feel when you start time blocking is you're like, oh my gosh, I have so much ease in my days. I have intention. I feel good. I feel organized. And then you'll go back to like your old habits and you'll feel overwhelmed, chaotic, stressed out, your mood will change, and it's your first clue you like need to get back to doing it. So instead of trying to do like, I am now a new person, you know, because that did not happen for me. I was like, oh my gosh, Delray, you did a day. Congratulations. Good job. Let's try another day. And then when I'd fall off track, it'd be like, okay, now you know how it feels. Get back on track again. And I think that kind of goes with life in general or anything you're trying to master is you got to give yourself some grace. You have literally a neurological pattern in your brain that's been there for a very long time. Pattern interrupt and in changing your neurology of the neuroscience that it takes to create transfer. Everybody would have the life that they want if it was that easy to create new habits. So the pattern interrupt for me is ask, I ask myself a different question. Why is it necessary? You've heard me say the word ne necessary or necessity how many times throughout this? Why is it necessary? The word necessary and necessity means you've raised the standard and a reason why you go from the word should to the word must. That's how you pattern interrupt your brain. Have you ever said to yourself, well, I should really time block or oh, I should really do my reach outs today. I should probably do this. How many times do we say that? Like catch yourself and ask yourself, how many times in a day do you say the word should? And it's not backed up by any action. So when I changed my life five years ago and made a decision, I changed it to, I must master my time because I'm robbing my girls of, of intentional time. We only get so many moments. My past, the past year in my life has shown me that. I have been through cancer battles with a, a close family member. I have like gone through so many things that have showed me. We literally think we have all the time in the world here and it goes by this fast. 
my must for a necessity was raised because I said to myself, what do you have right now that's a limiting, you know, self-sabotaging behavior with your physical body? You know, is it you are giving into stress eating or late night snacking, or you're not a product of the product right now? What do you need to get back to for me? This is a physical vessel that needs to do a lot of work. It needs a lot of energy. It needs love and attention. And I need to fuel it properly because I need people. I need to serve people. People need me right now. And so when I think about raising necessity in all of those, I needed to learn how to master money and I needed to learn how to create abundance so I could give and serve on levels that I've never had before. So it was necessary for me to have a new relationship with it. And I think once you change those words, your brain and the pattern interrupt, your actions will follow. And like I do a lot of Tony Robbins stuff. I went to his things like locking it in with music and movement. And like my daughter has power moves. I'm not even kidding you. We're like, make your move. Let's go. Which is why we walk at night. Like it's our time to talk and we move our bodies. And it's just like this new state of energy. You will not see a happy person with slumped shoulders in a rut, like with low energy because their their state is everything. I don't even, I don't care if you need to get a badass playlist or your crystal executive playlist going right now, go make one. And when you feel yourself slipping into that feeling, go move your body and get into that playlist because that uh, music and movement are the top two things that will pattern interrupt your brain. And so we dance together. I mean, we, we get it done in the morning and it just changes everything. And of course, Ionix helps. And now Supermix, I really love it. <laughs> I'm glad I asked that question because that was really helpful. And I find myself, what you just described about falling off and then you're like not time blocking and on your schedule. And it does, it affects your day or mood. You get like irritated. So that was really helpful. And I don't want to take up much more of your time because you have your little daughter waiting. So um, the chat has just been going crazy, awesome. loving everything you said. Um, definitely, they are feeling it. They're picking up what you're putting down <laughs> and relating to it. And really appreciate your time. And we just, like you said, we just love hearing from different leaders because you know how it is. Your team likes to hear, this. it's almost the same stuff, but yeah. it's just a different story and different perspective. And so it's always so helpful. So we really appreciate you so much. Of course. You to unmute and just give Delray some love. And I hope you have a great walk with your daughter. Thank you. I love all of you. My isogenic Thank you. family. <laughs> I can't wait to see you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.